Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a top level game of Professional StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is the finals of the Korean StarCraft League. And from what I've heard, this particular series is an absolute banger. So I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down is once again, we have two fan favorites in the finals. These guys are good friends, they're teammates. First off in the top right hand corner of Ancient Cistern, we're looking inside of the main base of Dark. And his opponent already harassing that mineral line, playing in the opposite corner with the blue protos pieces. We're looking inside of the main of Hero. Hero versus Dark. It's an absolute classic. These guys have been going, well, back and forth and back and forth for a very long time at this point. Both of them play in a ton of online cups and in general, they produce some fantastic games. Mostly also though, not just because they're very good at the game, but because they also know the opponent incredibly well. I think that these two probably also play practice games quite a bit, so there's uh, certainly gonna be some mind games. I will try and cover any that I will spot, but there's a good chance that, yeah, there's more going on behind the game as well that we don't quite realize. There's a chance these guys have, for example, right before this, played a couple ladder games against one another, right? And they showed some strategies that they decided to go for then, but it's not gonna be something they will be going for right now. Up to this point though, this game looks very normal to me. Hero has decided to go for that good old Stargate opener and well, apparently he's managed to successfully block his opponent's natural expansion, but the third base will be coming up here shortly as well for Dark. I believe this drone is the chosen one. He is the chosen one. His armor stained with blood. He did not, you know, he did not slay the dragon, but that's okay. Sorry, that's an old song. Don't know if anybody remembers it. A couple of Zerklings, though, do get into the natural expansion right now of the opponent. And this is, of course, something that Dark is very good at. He doesn't really want to kill probes. Well, I mean, he wants to kill probes, but he knows that that is going to be difficult to pull off. Two more Zerklings do show up, though, so he does get at least one of those workers. Maybe a second. Maybe a third? Okay, remember when I said he didn't really want to kill workers? That's because I thought that these Zerklings were primarily here just to try and scout the Stargate, which is obviously real nice. In the end... Okay, killing two probes is basically the same cost as killing four Zerklings, but... The main advantage right here for Dark is that obviously these Adepts are now not harassing his natural expansion, so any follow-up Zerklings can be delayed for just a little while. Alright, he's not gonna be the greedy boy that we see a lot of Zerk players be lately, where they decide to skip those Spore Crawlers for at least a little while. He's instead decided to go for the Spores in both bases that he's got available right now. Oracle goes across, Adepts are, I think, ready to shade into the main base. Okay. Oracle's still trying to get a bit of work done. I don't really like this Adept movement too much, to be honest. Maybe he can commit to the main? Okay, yeah, he's gonna get in there eventually. It's just that this is definitely gonna be sacrificial. There's no way that these units are gonna get out. Four workers is certainly not bad. My main concern, right, is that we do not actually have a third Nexus here yet for the Protals. So normally with an Oracle opener, you would use those Adepts to actually keep the third base alive at about the 3 minute and 45 second mark. So, even though, yeah, he did a little bit of worker damage on the other side of the map, this is already about 45 seconds late, which is very significant. Alright. Now, luckily here, for Hero, he's going up against Dark, and Dark is not necessarily known to play the cleanest early games. So, I think if... This would be the start that Hero had against somebody like Serral. He would already be in a world of trouble. But luckily, right here for Mr. Hero, he's going up against Dark. Don't get me wrong, Dark is incredibly good at the game. But he doesn't have the work account that some of the other top-level Zergs would be sitting on right now. And he's gonna lose a couple more here as well. Okay. Yeah, he's only just now catching up in the work account, which is kind of, kind of crazy when you think about it. No Spore over here, by the way. Can that queen maybe finish the job? Nah, no, we're gonna recall. Love that recall right there from Hero! Okay. Whew. The Hero recall indeed. Alright, so in the end, I think this is actually totally fine here for Hero though. Only just now is when Dark is finally gonna get relatively close to that 3 base saturation. He will still need to take all of the gases here. Did he just kill another one? Alright. Anyways, he will still need to take the gases here and saturate those as well, but at the very least we've got a decent economy. Fourth hatchery actually coming up nice and quickly here as well for the Zerg player. But now it's apparently time for Hero to continue the harassment. This is already a little bit of an awkward one. Yeah, so he's following this up with charge together with plus one ground. 
We may see a Templar Archives here as well in just a moment, but these Adepts, seven of them, very randomly timed. This is not your ordinary timing for Adepts. Keep in mind, they do not have the Glaives upgrade, right? Normally whenever we... Oh, nice. What Chamber Block? He doesn't finish it. Anyways, normally whenever we see the Glaive to Deck push, well, it's gonna come with the Glaive to Deck upgrade, right? In this particular case, this is just seven random Adepts ready to harass that Mineral Line and deal as much eco damage as possible. He decides to cancel that Shade. These drones did not run away yet. A couple of them are stuck between the Queens. All right, so that's seven Adepts for eight drones. Is that worthwhile? Probably not. But it does severely slow down the Zerg economy. And at least for a little while here, Protoss is going to get more income. I think that's probably the reason why we do have this push on the back of this. Now, sadly, the Temporal Archives here is a bit late. I think that probably should have started up a bit sooner. I think the idea right now for Hero is to go for a Zealot Archon all-in. So, Charge is going to finish up right around the same time as the plus one upgrade. Okay, he decides to go into a Robo Bay. I wonder if that's because of the fact that the Templar Archives is late, or because he believes he will not be able to win the game with this upcoming attack. But whenever you go for the Charge upgrade first, it does feel pretty committed, because... Again, Zork is now, if you don't attack them, they're going to be able to do whatever they please. Now, does Dark realize it? He's been saving up money. Roachworn finishes up right now. Yeah. I think he realizes that something is a little bit fishy, so he fires up as many roaches as possible. There's a drone hanging out over here on the right side. I think this may have been thinking about making a hatchery here, but instead I think the hatchery was planted in the main. This fourth hatch has been up for a bit, but it's mostly just, well, a macro base as well. We're just using this as a larva generator. And maybe that's also the reason, by the way, why Hero has decided not to really commit to this aggression all too much. He decides to go into double Colossus? Hello. Hero, don't queue them up, buddy. Queuing up two Colossus? Really? That's gotta be a misplay. There's no way that that is intentional. That's so much money. He's probably wondering right now where his resources went. Especially if you're just about to go for an attack, you want to do as many warp ins as possible. Okay, well, uh, queuing up the Colossi is certainly suboptimal, and it makes his army quite a bit weaker. Honestly, not that impressive of an army at all. No, I think Hero has decided he doesn't really want to go for the committed push just yet. He's even thinking about making a fourth Nexus right now, but obviously for a while now, and this is already uh, a strange little mind game, for a while now, Hero has... Or sorry, Dark has been producing non-stop roaches. So his army is massive. As a matter of fact, he's just about to just max out, I guess. Roach speed is done. Plus one missile is finishing up as well. This is, in the end... We, we went here in a very strange way. But in the end, this is just going to be a Roach Speed plus one attack timing. This is the oldest Zerg build order in the book. Yeah, we took a, a very convoluted route in getting here, but this is now one hell of a force. Hero has been getting very fancy with all of his decision making. He's moving around the map and trying to get a bit of work done here and there. But in the end, he might just be struggling here against a mass Roach attack. Now, obviously, this is something that Dark needs to deal damage with, because he doesn't have a whole lot of tech on the back of this. And so far, it looks like the very least hero is defending well. He split up his units, but yeah, here's the problem. At this point, his units are split up, and Dark, with a faster-moving army, he can just jump this. Nice picking up, though. All that Warp Prism, keeping the Archon as well as that Immortal alive. That Nexus is super dead. I honestly think we should continue fighting this, shouldn't we? Like, s Zerk? Maybe not, he just wants to run away, fair enough. Maybe he's almost triggered an all-in, so he's like, okay, if my opponent wants to fight me, I may as well fight him on creep. Tunneling Claws on the back of this, Burrow on the back of this too. He never really made drones though for the fourth base. Yeah. And Hero indeed is not gonna rebuild that Nexus, instead he's gonna be going into a Disruptor. Disruptor's fantastic in theory, but also very dangerous to control. And Obviously, you're almost lying. Uh, you're almost relying on a little bit of luck. You're almost relying on your opponent making a sloppy mistake, which really shouldn't happen at this level of play. It's also still going to be a while until that disruptor is going to be available. Until we will see those purification novas, I think this is going to be the moment where Dark collapses on top of this. Look at the amount of supply though that he's got available right now, and look at the amount of money here in the bank. There's a lot of splash damage though coming out of this Protoss army. Dark decides to hug those Archons in the front, which I really disagree with. Oh no, Dark. I mean, he can reinforce this, but he doesn't have the gas. He doesn't have the Larva either to actually spend his Mineral Bank. Yeah, this is a Dark versus Hero series to a T already. 
I mean, he's got a lot of roaches coming up, but what he really needed was some additional gas. He never took the gas geyser over here at the third, so he doesn't actually have that much income. Okay. Well, tunneling claws is done. Burrow is finished. Maybe Dark can tunnel his entire army underneath that of Hero. Oh my god, he's gonna try. I mean, that is one way to ambush this entire Protoss force. There's no detector available right here for the Protoss player. I think he can jump this. Oh my god, he's gonna jump it. There we go! He gets the perfect hit. Disruptor, though, still getting quite a bit of damage done. And actually, I think this is still gonna be enough right now for Hero. Lovely attempt right there, though, by our Zerg player, but not quite as good as it could have been. A very sloppy game number one, really from... Okay, I just I just said some cereal and I threw my spoon on the floor. Anyways, a very sloppy game number one. But in the end, it's Hero who obtains the victory. Royal Blood is gonna be game number two. And apparently Dark has decided to go for a 12 pool here. Okay, Dark. You know what? I like it. We'll have to see if it works out, I suppose. What version? Ah, okay. What version of the 12 pool are we gonna go for? Now, sadly, right here for the Zerk, Hero is scouting this right from the very start of the game. This is Dark pretending to go for a third base. Okay, yeah. So the timing right here of this drone is as such that it looks like a 16 supply hatchery. It looks like the same opener that... Dark ended up going for in game number one of this series. So, is Hero going to realize what he's playing against? I think the plan right now for Dark is to build a hatchery inside of his opponent's natural expansion. This isn't an opener we've seen all too much. So, Zerklings are coming up. Right now, Hero has checked and he's seen the lack of base. All he really needs to block is, yeah, this hatchery. If he can block an expansion right... Hero, really? Okay. Well, you had the unit there. You had all the time in the world to position that probe in the location where that hatchery is located right now. He would have shut this down relatively easily. Um, anyways, in the end, he's not going to be able to get the block. Is this a full wall? I think it just barely is, but it's going to be hard to say. Anyways, the probe moving back home right now together with the Zorklings, though, that are chasing it down. Six workers have been pulled here to kill that hatch. Mostly because we need that Zealot over here in the wall off. It really does look like there's space over here for the Zerklings to run in. Yeah, no, Dark was thinking the same thing. Okay, nah, we're okay. So in the end, this gets cancelled. A lot of lost mining time, of course, here for the Protoss player, but... Yeah, he does have quite a few more workers here compared to his opponent, although a lot of those workers obviously weren't mining. Killing one of the drones here is quite nice. Zorkling's trying to see if they can maybe get a trade against these Zealots. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't think I like that. So, here's the thing. I, I've been 12 pooling for years now, okay? I consider this a macro opener. Maybe not the one with the proxy hatch, but I do go for quite a few of these openings myself. I think the main advantage as a ladder hero of the 12 pool is that since you make Zorklings blindly, you really can't die to any sort of cheese, right? So, say, for example, your opponent decides to go for a cannon rush or a proxy gateway opener or anything along those lines, which, let's be real, is like one in three ladder games, you have an auto win. So that's because, because of that, I, I quite like the opener. In the end, though, when you're sacrificing your Zorklings against the Zealots, you end up pretty far behind. I actually don't think that's the right move. The reason, I guess, why Dark decided to go for it is because he's decided to now open this up gasless as well. So, he's gone for three hatcheries, and he does not have any gas income whatsoever. So, he will not have link speed, he really won't have a whole lot of stuff. The problem is, you're already behind in workers, and now with those Zerklings gone on, well, the other side of the map, you have to rebuild Zerklings to defend against the Adepts. And this is something that Hero definitely knows. Hero realizes, yo, if I just make a couple Adepts and I just park them out here, maybe I can get damage done, sure. But I'm already, well, indirectly getting damage done by forcing my opponent to make links when he's already behind in the worker count. So in the end, I actually don't think this is a good start right here. And honestly, the main reason why we don't really see this build anymore from Zork players, you just lose too much eco. Oh, getting a... Uh, oh, he does decide to commit. Okay. Getting a creep tumor there is amazing. Any worker kill at this, at this point is brutal. 
I still can't get over though the fact that we had that probe over here and the drone right over there and he just <laughs> he didn't block it. <laughs> Like, he just checked his opponent's third base. He knew that it wasn't a hatch first there from the Zerg. I think he'd even gone in the main base to see the spawning pool timing, but when you see the lack of hatchery after, you know, you already have seen a drone move out, one and one is two, right? There's really only one option. Either I guess the proxy hatch would be over here or it would be in the natural. He had like five seconds. Okay, maybe three seconds where he could have responded. And he didn't. Anyways, Hero, at this point, yeah, he recognizes the situation that he's in and he decides to commit to the Glyph, the Depth Attack. I find this also quite cheeky because he just threw away two Adepts, right, in favor of killing a couple of drones. He's like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and just, yeah, uh, go for an Adept follow-up as well. Probably not something Dark is necessarily going to expect, but Dark is also, yeah, already making units here. So he has got 38 workers, so he's been droning up quite greedily, all things considered. Roachworn's coming up. This is a double gas start, but keep in mind these are slow zerklings. Slow zerklings against adepts with resonating glaives. I mean, I've watched a lot of StarCraft games in my days. So I don't think this is gonna work out all too crazy good right here for the Zerk, but I might be wrong. He wants to get to the to the ramp here. The problem is that the longer he waits, he doesn't have a prism or anything, right? The longer he waits, the more units they're gonna be available right here for Dark. And I think the the timing window may very well be closed right now. Ah, uh, maybe not yet. He's gonna commit. Oh, he's not gonna commit? Dark thought it as well, man. He's now got enough adepts, though, to start killing those queens relatively easily, and even the roaches aren't really that much of a challenge. Honestly, maybe just kill the hatch? No, he is gonna commit now. Couple adepts here, following this up as well, shading into the mineral line itself. I don't think he's gonna... Okay, I was gonna say... Oh, catch those drones? <laughs> what a messy shade. <laughs> None of this is particularly optimal. Because, like, what you're trying to avoid, right, as Protoss here, is to get all of those roaches in the same place at the same time. Because the roaches are gonna win the fight straight up here. So you really just want to maximize the amount of damage you deal economically. I mean, if you can get the queens, that's big. If you can get the drones, that's awesome. If you can kill the hatchery, that's obviously amazing. I think in the end, this is still okay right now. Oh god, for the protos? But this is by no means the most optimal shading around the Zerg bases. He's got Dark Templar on the back of this as well right now, so the Dark Shrine is about halfway done. And you can see that that would really be the nail in the coffin. I think he probably wins the game before that, to be honest, but... Dark Shrine would be really nice to have here because, well, there's not even a lair. There's no spore crawlers. There is zero detection right here for the Zerg player. Still chasing down those Glaive to Depths with slow Zerglings and slow Roaches. All right. Well, the Dark Shrine is almost fully done. These Adept Shades, they've been nice. They've been dealing some damage. Maybe not an optimal amount of damage. Okay, we're gonna commit. I think he just has enough Adepts to just fight all of this straight up now, man. Maybe not, but in the end, though, Dark Templar. Oh, we're gonna go Shadow Strite? Come on, hero, just finish him, dude. All right, there we go. Five Adepts are coming up. I was gonna say, Dark is gonna GG out in three, two, one, now. Oh! <laughs> Thank you guys, uh, that will be all for today. I mean, I'm gonna cast the rest of this series, but please take a moment to hit the like button down below, thank you. I mean, I feel like I earned that one, you know? <laughs> Altitude, game number three, and match point right here for Hero. Okay. Biggest map in the current map pool. We'll have to see how this one ends up going down. You can't really play a cheeky game as easily on a map this big, right? Just. Simply because of the fact that any sort of aggression you want to go for, it just hits seconds later. Which really doesn't sound like a long, well, a long time, but... What I wouldn't give for a few more seconds. No, no, inappropriate. No, Loco, stop. It's gonna be a Stargate opener once again right here for Hero. You want to see a magic trick? What? How does he do it? Perfect. Alright, Stargate at this point is done. It's gonna be a Void Ray first. Interesting. Adept in the meantime, getting a bit of work done on the other side of the map. I don't know how I feel about Void Ray openers anymore. Like, I have ranted about Void Ray starts 
over the last couple of months, and I think it can be quite decent. The problem is that... I guess it's sort of like a macro opener these days, right? It's not good at anything in particular, but it's also not bad. Yeah, I think it's, you know, as far as like the gradation of this build goes, this opener for Protoss, I think it's like B tier. I think going straight Oracle is S tier. Maybe going straight Phoenix is like A tier. I think this is all right. You're definitely not gonna get any special uh, marks for something like this, but you know, you can make the beam thick just like this and hunt down a couple of those overlords. The variant I did quite like was the opener that we saw from SOS. Yeah, so, I mean, the Oracle's now gonna be needed here at home, so you're not really gonna get a whole lot of eco damage down here earlier on, which means that the Zerg can just do whatever they please. Like, yeah, maybe you kill an overlord or two, but I think you give the Zerg a lot of freedom here when you open up with a Void Ray. So, the version of the build that we saw from SOS, I really quite liked. So, basically, SOS opened up. What is this, dude? Is that. Was that Void Ray Stutter Step? I guess it was. He opened up with a single Void Ray. He cleared the path on the map for two carriers to go across and basically be completely unscouted. Now, obviously, you require your opponent to not really scout with Zorklings at that point and, you know, to not really get a whole lot of map vision other than Overlords. But that was kind of cute. That I kind of liked. It honestly kind of struck me as a hero build, and I think it may have actually been a hero build, so that's something that's going to be in the back of Dark's mind. Hero for a little while, especially on maps like Neo Humanity, has been playing those double carrier starts, which can be kind of fun, can be kind of good. I casted him doing it a couple of times in the past, but yeah, now with these oracles here, I mean, it's pretty clear that that is not the case. Still though, I like this start up to this point here for the Zerk quite a bit. If these Adepts can maybe kill a couple of drones, that would be really sweet. Hello. Okay, we're gonna sacrifice the Oracle for- <gasps> Oh, no, we're not gonna sacrifice the Oracle. Adept going into the natural expansion, getting a bit of work done. Hello, drones. Stop body blocking each other, please, thank you. All right, the Adepts are gonna get recalled. Now the Oracles continue the harassment some more. Queens are obviously in the natural. Bzz, 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 bzz. That's my impression of oracles killing bzz, drones. Bzz, bzz. Okay. Now I like to start a whole lot better for Hirado. <laughs> He's taken a very strange route to getting towards a very normal game. So in the end, we just, yeah, go right now into the blink upgrade together with the plus one ground weapons. He's still harassing over here as well. That is the oracle that was never meant to be. But he's still around, he's still kicking, and he escaped death. All right, Dark has already had enough. <laughs> Dark's like, you know what, dude? Stop it. I am so done with all of your stuff. You're being very fancy. You've killed too much of my eco. Nidus network it is. Now, in theory, this should never work because there is a Void Ray out. That Void Ray should be phenomenal when it comes to, for example, shutting down Overseers over here. Right? I feel like this is a very vulnerable spot. Um, at this point, there's really nothing available yet. Oh, he gets an Oracle. That's big. Sorry, did he at least scout the Nidus? He did not. There's the plus one flyer upgrade. Yeah, this could actually backfire right now for Hero quite a bit. I don't know where... Okay, I don't know where the Worm is going to go down. Apparently, it's going to be right over here at like the 9 o'clock position on the map. The problem right here, of course, is that there's no vision in the main base or anything along those lines. So... The attack is gonna have to take place right over here. I think this is really just like a, a Nidus start. It's like the Warsaw subway, you know? Yeah, just to get the queens across. The Roaches and Ravagers, I guess, arrive ever so slightly quicker, but they could have just walked. They have a lot of legs, right? They have like six legs. I guess the queens have legs too, so maybe the amount of legs is irrelevant here. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna use this to quickly reinforce. And as a target, I guess, as well. Ooh, Stalkers over here do get caught out in the open. Would be real nice to have that third Oracle available right now, but sadly, it was not meant to be. He's droning behind it. Dark, what is this? A Macronitis? He's going for an infestation pit and drones behind it. Really? A Macronitis worm. Okay. I mean, I don't hate it, don't get me wrong. I just don't know if it's good. Robo Bay here on the back it is too, so that's gonna allow the Protoss right now to go into, say, for example, Colossi or Disruptors. And I think the hero has already figured out that indeed this is not a very committed attack here from the Zerk player whatsoever. Nah, Zerk's just chilling. <laughs> Zerklings! Okay. 
trying to get into the base. Dark, of course, well aware of Hero's nasty F2 habit, where he uses the O army hotkey and doesn't have a unit in the wall off, but that'll probably be reserved for the later stages of this particular match. There's the Overseers, or sorry, the Overseers, the Infestors coming up here as well for the Zerg. Hello? Oh my god. How do you guys keep, like, not dying? <laughs> oh god, okay. Yeah, nice. I mean, this man... This man enjoys his oracles, and he makes them look very, very powerful. To the point where I almost believe they are the best unit in the game. But... Okay, not, not quite the best unit in the game. I think the best unit in the game is reserved to Brenda. Brenda and her ladies. Oh, absolute legends. But the Oracle is definitely a darn good unit. But only in the right hands. Hero is definitely skating on some very thin ice, though. Okay, so where do we end up right now? Well, it's gonna be a Spire together with a Hive. So he'll probably be looking at Brute Lords here soon. Nexus coming up here all the way at the bottom of the map. I think he originally wanted to make this quite a bit earlier, but I think that hero was like, yo, bro, you made that Nidus Worm? Like, where's the Nidus Worm? This was a... A Macro Nidus, I guess. I mean, I don't really have a better way to describe it. This was a Nidus Worm where Dark was like, eh, yeah, here, here we go. I'm ready to commit, just kidding. I mean, one thing he did achieve with that, and honestly, that may already be quite a big deal, is the opponent decided to cancel the plus one flyer upgrade. So the plus one air weapons was coming up for a while already for Hero. He was ready to go into that mass sky toss transition. He's gonna commit to that again right now, but obviously this is minutes later. And despite the fact that Dark was actually quite a bit behind economically, he droned, like he made the Nidus Worm, threw the Nidus Worm down, sent the Queens across, put down a couple creep tumors, and then droned and made an infestation pit and went back home. That is so strange. I think he must have seen something in that Protoss army that, like, made him give up on the attack? That may very well be a mind game as well, though, where, like, recently Dark did decide to commit to some heavy Nidus aggression, and... Maybe when he saw, okay, I can't get my Zerklings into the natural, it's probably not going to work. I'll just make the executive decision, uh, decision there to not go for the committed push. Alrighty, so, we have Sky Toss going up against Sky Zerk. Second Spire coming up. Pathogen Glance finishing up right now. Great Aspire about to finish. We've got ourselves 10 Corruptors ready to turn themselves into Brute Lords as well. Uh, I've got a feeling that the age of the ground units is soon coming to an end. Yeah. Remember when humans figured out how to work iron? We decided to give up on bronze real quick. These guys over here, bronze. We don't like them anymore. I mean, maybe we do. Really, hero? Okay. Now, as late as the fourth base was, all things considered, as early, like this, this is insane. The fourth base is, or sorry, the fifth base over here is already coming up and it's at the gold base as well. Now, this is gonna be right around the time that the Brute Lords are coming up. Yeah, there they are. Sorry, lad. There was no supply for you available. There was no room at the inn. For this one corruptor. <laughs> he got bullied. Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, sorry. This is your life. Well, you know what? Turns out the guy that didn't have any room in it. This is still useful. You can start working on a prism. I think what we really need to work on, though, is this gold base over here. Because these golden minerals are gonna return a lot of cash. And obviously, Hero is gonna be more than happy to start sending all of those zealots all over the map. He's already got a little hit squad of units over here. Ooh, big fungal. One stalker pays the price. Hello. No, he, okay. That was a bit risky, but yeah, now he sees the Brute Lords. I think this is the first time he picks up on them. How many flying units do we have though? Okay, I was gonna say, those capital ships have been on the production tab for a while. We've got more coming up. I don't know if Dark realizes it, he hasn't seen it, but I think the passivity here from the Protoss has already given him all the intel he really needs. So, Dark has decided to commit to attacking this base, but by no means is he rushing it. I think he wants to have a formidable army before making that call. He may have already picked up, actually. Maybe he saw a couple of those carriers earlier. Probes are finally moving in. I feel like this base finished up like two minutes ago. Are we gonna see a fungal from the low ground? I mean, I don't hate it. 
But anyways, while this army over here is working on all of this stuff... Yeah, we have that uh, Stalker reinforce over here. Hero just sending all of his units towards the other side. The Void Ray from the early game just ended up popping out of the sky like a balloon. I know. Sorry to the Void Ray connoisseurs in the chat. Or, I guess, the comment section. Are we really gonna sacrifice this many Stalkers to potentially killing a, a Hatchery? I mean, it's... okay. I don't think I... Yeah, I know. You know what? I was gonna say I don't think I hate it, but I do think I hate it. In the meantime, the Carriers, yeah, they finished the same job. And that Immortal too. And a Colossus. There's actually two Immortals. They finished that job much quicker than the Stalkers do. The thing is, you don't really want to have that many Stalkers available anymore at this point in the game anyways. So, I guess that hero has decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and give up some of my supply here. And I'll replace it with some better units instead. So, Immortal coming up. Ultra Cavern at the same time too. This is something that hero sees. So, he'd be happy to see that, I think. Because Immortals absolutely tear apart Roaches, Ravagers, but also Ultralisks. And he's also replacing some of the Lost Stalkers here with additional carriers. There's the plus three arrow weapons coming up. The plus two has finished already, so those interceptors, those interceptors at this point are powerful. Gold base, by the way, survived during all of this too. So this game is looking pretty steadily right here for Hero. I mean, I say that, and then I remember him just giving up 20 stalkers to kill one base. Hello, Templar. Okay. We're gonna now also sacrifice some of our zealots. Luckily though, Dark ended up killing one of his own creep tumors there. There's some abductions, but there's only really a small amount of units. Okay, fungal growth after an abduction so the queens can <laughs> snipe it down and then transfuse some of those corruptors up in the air too. Hello. Please ca take care of your carriers here. These are some complex unit compositions though. All things considered, this is not an easy unit comp for either player to properly control. So while I'm memeing a little bit here, and I'm making a little bit of fun of some of the decisions, this is by no means an easy unit composition to control for either player. Zealots here helping out as well, putting in a bit of work. Mostly though, I guess what Hero is really doing here is almost soft containing the opponent on a certain amount of economy. So these bases are all gonna run out in like 10 minutes or so from now. And if you can keep the Zerg player on this little economy for such a long time, they're gonna run out. These Zealots are gonna get sacrificed as well in favor of a Hatchery. And it looks like another one of those bases from the Zerg will fall. So normally, yeah, we see these armies here from Protoss played very passively. Not really though, ooh, those corrosive balls. Not really though what our Protoss player is doing. And you know what? It may very well be an overextension. We are storming our own carriers while parasitic bombs are going down as well. I mean, that was a questionable decision for sure. Like I said, Hero was moving around the map very aggressively. He was not maxed out there either, and he definitely overstayed his welcome. Parasitic bomb deals 120 damage in area of effect, and storm deals 80. So in just a couple of seconds there, to all of those clumped up units, the Protoss army took 200 damage. That's absurd. I mean, those carriers just, I mean, they have a lot of health, but... If you take the uh, fungal growth damage on top of that, and obviously the corruptors and the queens poking away, that is so much damage going down. I think about half of the damage right there was dealt by the Protoss units there to their own... Okay, maybe not half, maybe a third, but a substantial chunk of the damage right there in that fight was dealt by the Protoss units to the Protoss units. Now that Nidus Worm is coming up again, Brute Lords are finally going to be able to clear some of this base. Dark Templar right now, though, are starting to harass this, and yeah, there's not a whole lot of detection available, so more hatcheries are indeed going to fall. What a game, dude. These guys are so aggressive. Very chaotic gameplay, right? Very chaotic. Now, big picture, though. In the midst of all this chaos, Zerk has got an overwhelming advantage right now. Let's look at the resources lost. Yeah, look at this. Oh my lord, look at that. Look at the amount of resources lost right here by Hero. Yeah, he's been killing all those bases. Yeah, he's been shutting down the Zerk economy. 
But in the end, Dark is not dead. His army is absolutely humongous. 59 army supply versus 140. The unit lost tap usually is heavily in favor of the Protoss, but Zerk is just cruising now. Okay, you know the one unit we didn't really have that much yet? We're gonna go ahead and just make Mass Void Ray right now. Mass Void Ray is not something that Zerk is really going to struggle with, I don't think. I mean, Corruptors aren't a great unit against it, but together with Fungal Growth and Parasitic Bombs, I think they're gonna have a grand old time. There's still quite a few Queens available. These are also not gonna be like unupgraded Corruptors or whatever. Nah, they're gonna be able to get their 3-3 research in a few minutes from now. Luckily though, here for Hero, he did just fly basically all- Like, I think he lost like 10 Corruptors just now for free. This is more than those carriers from earlier killed. Okay. So, the top left hand corner, I guess, is where Zork is now reciting. He's got 60 workers, which really isn't that much, but he does have the golden minerals at this point. Hero, though, and this is, I guess, it almost feels like with the units lost and, like, the amount of economy here, because Hero is sitting at 82 workers, it almost feels like Hero is the Zerg and Dark is the Protoss, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Because the units lost and the economies here really seem flipped upside down. Look at Hero with the sudden tech transition. The sudden tech transition right now to watch a bunch of... Okay, yeah, Void Race. He's just throwing away Stalkers and Zealots in favor of Hatchery and, and Drone Snipes. I don't believe that's all particularly optimal. By the way, the Bronze Age is not fully over yet because we've been seeing a lot of Roach production. I don't think Dark really wants to be producing all of these units. He would much rather have, I don't know, some Lurkers, something like that. Look at this. This is effectively a Zerkling run-by right now, right? Or maybe a Roach run-by? Some of the damage here will continue, but... Okay, that's a hatchery going down. Fungal growth, though. Hello. There we go. Fungal growths are amazing here. Fungal growth prohibits any sort of movement ability in StarCraft 2, so those stalkers, yeah, they want to blink away. But not every single one of them is going to have that luxury. The problem is this. Uh, the, the problem here is, though, that I don't see how this is ever going to work out favorably for the Protoss. Because Dark is still maxed, he still has a big amount of army, he's got a good bank, his economy is certainly not bad. The only way in which I can imagine this working out is if Dark is gonna allow the opponent to just mine for a very long time to come. Basically what Dark wants to do is fight straight up. Kind of like what Zerg usually, you know, does against Protoss though, yeah. As soon as Dark commits to an attack, Hero goes in for the counter attack. So this is... Hmm. This really does feel a little funky. Those, oh, those infestors though are putting in so much work. Couple biles here to try and slow all of this down. Brute Lords coming in. Queens just wandering off of that creep as well. They will not be able to transfuse. But in a straight up fight, there is absolutely no chance that Hero is going to win. So that's why he's constantly counterattacking and he's trying to rely on that big economy of his. There's always a chance, of course, that Dark is misreading this as well. Because Dark has been sitting on 60 something workers for a very long time at this point, and he's got himself a decent eco, yeah. But there's a chance that he assumes that Protoss here is completely broke. That's not the case. Hero at this point is maxed out again. It's a way weaker army, but it's a mobile one and it's not gonna be easy here for Zerk to chase it down. That's a kill on a hatchery there. More and more bases are coming up. The probes are definitely gonna have to look for another mineral line. There's the Mama ship as well to maybe make this unit composition even worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have Storm, Stalker, Void Ray, and the Mothership. Okay. It's time for Dark Dough to start getting rid of some of these bases. Because the economy here is actually starting to get quite absurd. Hero right now is getting a ton of income once again. He needs to make sure he gets some more gas. But when he trades out those Stalkers and Void Rays here inevitably, because they're not going to win him the game, he can make a massive transition towards an actual scary army. Alright, at this point with the creep spreading towards the mineral line, apparently Protoss is just going to evacuate this. I think that's the wise decision, just get out of there and start moving towards the right side of the map. Okay. So, the Void Race squad though, 16 Void Race. Not to be underestimated. He's flying over creep, 
So, there's no observer either, right? Like, he's just YOLOing the units in. Uh, I'm a little afraid of some Void Race getting fungled here, but... <laughs> you could easily fight this. If you had an observer nearby, you could actually get some work done, but... If you could get rid of the creep as well and not be spotted from a mile away, that would also be very helpful. I don't understand why there's no observer in the mix. Yeah, we have two of them available. I think it'd be really nice to use that to his advantage. Anyhow, Hatchery coming up here at the 9 o'clock position as well. A probe sees this. Luckily for him though, he's hiding behind the assimilator here, or the Vespine geyser, so Dark cannot see that observer, of course. Bailing Nest coming up, plus three melee coming up. I mean, hmm. There are so many probes available for so long that apparently we are now deciding to get rid of some of those workers. Hero has been maxed out for a while. Yeah, and he wants to get rid of those probes in favor of additional army. You know what? I think this game is actually a whole lot better now for Hero than it was a few minutes ago. He was essentially dead in the water, but with 80 workers at like minute 18. But now we're 24 minutes in, and I still don't think this is a comfortable position. But it's a hell of a lot more, yeah, comfortable than it was uh, 10 minutes or so ago. For some reason, Dark has decided I am... Okay, he's making a backup spire. He's making an ultra cavern. He is just sitting back. I think at this point, Dark is doing that thing that, like, people do in airplanes, you know? Where he's, like, leaning his seat back. He's making it uncomfortable for all of us. But at the very least, he's having a good time, you know? So rather than going for the throat, which I think he could have done quite a while ago, he decides, nah, I'll just sit back, I'll just relax, I'll take my time eating, you know, airplane food and hanging out. I'll take an hour savoring my airplane wine. <laughs> uh, already a remake. Yeah, he's been prepared for this. 17 overlords. Dark, are you, okay. Well, that's one way to get rid of your bank. He's going for a Rojaling Ravager counterattack over here, but he's losing everything. 17 overlords. Guys, that's 1700 minerals. I know, quick math. Never do math in a video. He did bring an overseer over here. So that's something, I guess. So he anticipated this a couple minutes ago. I really think that Dark could have avoided this by being more aggressive. He's gonna lose the plus three melee upgrade, actually. Oh, he's not. Recall is gonna be used instead. What? Like, the one thing that was worth killing here in our main base does not go down. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Of course, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Stalker's here on the other side of the map, trying to just put in a bit of work. Not going to happen, though. As Hero is once again going for a move. Look at the amount of money here in the bank. Really, the main problem here, though, for Protoss is gas. This is a gas-heavy army, or at least it should be a gas-heavy army. Those bases here are gonna run out. As funny as that is, normally those bases don't really run out that quickly, but they are running relatively no low now. That's another hatchery down the drain. 69 workers remain here for Hero, only 35 for Dark. <sighs> really dark. I don't think he cares about the workers anymore, my man. He's long distance mining on creep. He's making another bailing nest as well, by the way. Why are we why are we hunting down those probes when there's a million probes over here to take down? Now suddenly the void rays are stutter stepping again. What a game. Dude, whenever these guys play against each other, the dis <laughs> What? Okay, whenever these guys play against each other, they play some of the craziest strategies. Craziest, as in... Suboptimal. How many Void Rays have we had? Yeah, we are now 18 Void Rays in this game. Fully upgraded Void Rays is really not something we've seen since the most recent StarCraft patches. Back when double Stargate openers were the norm, that is something we used to see, but this many Void Rays? Not something we normally have anymore. So Dark has basically decided that, yeah, he spawned in the top right-hand corner, but the top left-hand corner is what he calls home these days. He's basically decided, yo, these bases, that's all I'm ever going to have. And I don't care how much you mine, I honestly couldn't care. I am just gonna go ahead and chill in my corner. 
And I don't know if it's good. Considering Hero has had basically the entire map here for a while now. I don't think it's great. But then again, Dark's late game control is absurd. That's a dead mama ship. At least she gets two time warps off, but it's not gonna do too much. No. Nothing all too amazing. Hero is gonna take one of the bases here that Zerk was mining previously. And you know what? I think you could make a beeline for this base over here too, Hero. The only resource you're really lacking is gas, and I don't believe that Dark is planning on harassing you anymore. Dark is going ultra disc right now. I actually think this base is ripe for the taking. This this base has not been mined very much. If at all, actually. No, I think it's been mined a little bit, but... Normally this is something you take quite early as the Zerk, but Dark has basically been going... All the way to the top left, right away at the start of the game. Zerk can counterattack here. They'll be joined by Ultras here pretty soon, and Ultras are actually quite scary. All of these units here on the ground get destroyed by Ultras. If there's no Immortals in the mix, Ultras are actually phenomenal units. They're fully upgraded. And I don't think that hero realizes that they are on the production tab right now. I don't know if he's seen them. No, he has not seen the Ultra Cavern, and I don't blame him. It's a weird unit to go for right now. But when there's no Immortals available, I mean, I guess the Void Rays will be alright. But ultimately, I'm imagining here that those Void Rays are going to be replaced with more and more carriers. And carrier interceptors take forever when it comes to killing Ultralisks. So by the time you kill the Ultras, they have already killed every single ground unit. What a strange unit comp right here for the Zerg, though. It all makes sense in theory. It's just really hard to control properly. Okay, well, that's one way to get rid of them. My god. How do you counter the Void Ray? Well, you counter the Void Ray with Void Rays. Now the Void Rays are countering one another. Dark is a scary man. Can we have maybe... Do we have any queens still? Ah, we have no units that shoot up. No, we do. They were just on the other side of the map. So what is Hero gonna replace these lost units with? That's my main question. Gateway units is not gonna cut it. Dark has decided to smash his gas bank here and add on 14 infestors. So we're going 30, okay, the 22, 22 infestors here, okay. No, a little bit less, some of them have already finished. Okay, anyways, long story short, Dark is gonna be even more passive. I guess he plans on winning this game by fungling his opponent's units to death. And then when they overextend, to neuroparasite them. Dark Templar here has been tasked with killing all of the leftover structures here in the main base of the Zerg. Dark's army is insane though. Like, in theory, this is an army that kills everything. The Protoss army here is still very mid-gamey. I, I don't like this. It's very mid, yeah, as the Zoomers say. Uh, it's very mid. It is not lit at all. Like, on, on God, you know? No cap. For real, this is a very weak army. It's low-key, very weak. Look at these Ultras. Yeah, these are fully upgraded Ultras, man. They don't care. I mean, the Void Rays are still having a grand old time, but they still took down a lot of those Stalkers. We're gonna replace the Lost Ultras with new Ultras. I think there's about as many Protoss units as there are Infestors right now, man. We're replacing this with more Stalkers, really. We we just warped in, where are they all? Ah! Uh, we just replaced all of the lost units with Stalkers. Is that the right call? This reporter can only guess... No. I'm inspired by Donnie Vermillion. There's no way that that's gonna be good. I think Ultras, Infestors, Brute Lords are gonna murder Stalkers. This is the big surprise, the grant reveal that Hero has been working on this entire time. I think Dark will be happy. Okay, well, here we go. This is apparently the moment where we decide to commit. Fungal growths are going down left, right, and center. Massive fungals, big parasitic bombs as well. Stalkers are escaping. Or, sorry, infestors are escaping. Ultras going to town right over here. More and more fungals are also lined up. All of the ground units right now, though, for Zork are gone, other than, I guess, the Infestors. If he can morph all of those Corruptors into Brute Lords right now, I think that's the nail in the coffin. What are we replacing all of these lost units with? 
We're replacing them with more ultras. There's the mama ship showing up after the fight. Oh, God. So far, this series is like the lowest high level game that I've casted in a month. It's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. We're all army hotkeying the spore crawlers right there, so I guess, uh, yeah. We just don't have enough. There's no detection available other than this one observer, and the observer just YOLO'd itself. That was the second observer that just YOLO'd itself into the spore crawlers. There's no detection right here for those infestors. Dark is gonna absolutely smash this army. What a game! What are we looking at? I'm just thinking, right? If this would have been Max Pax playing and Dark played the way that he just did, Max Pax would destroy him. But hey, in the end, Dark gets a point on the board and that means this is not gonna be a clean victory for Hero. That means we're gonna go to game number four. Dragon Skills is gonna be game number four. Now, at the start of this game, there was a lot of chatter going on. If somebody could translate any of this, that would be fantastic. I would really like to know what they're talking about, but I don't speak any Korean, so if somebody could let me know down below in the comment section, that would be awesome. Usually there's at least somebody watching this who can speak fluent Korean, who can give us the gist of what's happening. I think that'll uh, give us a nice little bit of info. <sighs> I wonder if either of them was happy with the execution that they went for in the previous game. These two, right? Whenever they're playing tournament games against each other, God forbid, right? I always kind of feel like they're having fun. I know. Playing video games? Not even video games. Playing StarCraft 2 for fun? I don't even know if that is allowed, to be honest. At the very least, they seem to be having a blast, and I'm really enjoying casting these games as well, even though I am fairly critical of what they're doing. Uh, of course, there is money on the line for series like this. I don't know exactly what the current price pool is for the KSL. You could probably look it up on Liquipedia if you care, but... There's uh, a good couple hundred dollars here and there for basically every single series that I cast on the channel. And usually, we see players bringing out their A strategies, right? Their very best threats. But I think oftentimes these guys are like, you know what? Nah. Not against him. Not against that guy. I'm just gonna mess around, throw some stuff at the wall and see if it sticks. I can't get over though that the, the previous game was essentially like a complete reversal as far as like... As far as like the regular roles that we normally see in this matchup go, right? So we had the Protoss player expanding all over the map, a vastly superior economy, throwing units at the wall and hoping that something would eventually stick. Killing loads of bases, and in the meantime, we had the Zark player turtling up in the corner of the map. Not even a corner where he started on, he was already ready to replace any of the lost units uh, and, and lost structures there, right? With, with new tech in the top left. He just decided to go... Yeah, full turtle in the top left with static defense and a whole lot of spellcasters. Very interesting. Alrighty, anyways. Four workers have gone down so far in this game. Dark hits a massive supply block at 50 supply. Is that necessary? Uh, maybe? I don't know. I know that some people always get a little critical of me whenever I'm critical of the pro gamers. It's like, Loco, if you know it so well, then why don't you do it? <laughs> There's always at least one guy in the comment section. <laughs> That's what you sound like, by the way, in my head. Um, I think it's more than fair to be critical of professional players as a commentator. Just because I personally may not have the capabilities of executing it doesn't mean that I don't have the knowledge. But, um, yeah, I do. Uh, I would go out and say that uh, hitting a supply block at 50 supply is suboptimal, guys. I know, I, I know, crazy, crazy idea. Alrighty, so third Nexus here comes up. It's gonna finish up at 5 minutes and 14 seconds. Boom. That's good. There's the blink upgrade coming up with the plus one uh, ground as well, so... This will just be a normal transition right now for Hero. Dark has got a couple of links running around the map. Here's that seven Adept hit squad. This time around though, yeah, these are unupgraded Adepts. They get caught in the middle of the map and it looks like this trick that... Oh, Hero really wants to play on the opponent is not gonna work a second time. And that's painful. 
I actually don't think that committing right there with all of those links was worthwhile. I think he should have disengaged when he saw the opponent shading backwards. But anyways, this time around, Dark is not gonna just take a bunch of eco damage, because he's already taken the eco damage by making that many Zerklings previously. Nicely done right there by Dark. In theory, great. Execution, eh. Queens right now, yeah, they're in a little bit of a vulnerable spot. So I think Hero may have wanted to jump that, but when he saw the transfusion, he decided to go for the revelation instead. He just wants to snipe a bunch of tumors. Adepts, though, have already preemptively shaded backwards, so the majority of them will stay alive. All right, the real question is, when are we gonna be able to move out with the Stalkers? So usually for Zerk, there's a time for droning, and then there's a time for unit making. And the time for droning is coming to a close right now. Yeah, usually once we see unit production from Zerk after 3 base saturation, it's not gonna end for quite a while. So you can see that Dark is just holding down that drone button. Hero doesn't really have that many Stalkers out just yet though. We should see some large warp ins now, there we go. Is he gonna go for a fourth Nexus to get her there, or is he just gonna commit to mass Stalker production? Infestation Pit coming up. Could be for Infestors, could be for... Swarm Hosts, could just be for a Hive. But Dark is definitely... Oh, he had another Supply Block. He's definitely gonna need a lot of units. These Supply Blocks are, are really hurting me, man. They're hurting Dark as well. I mean, those random Oracle fly-ins that just, you know, fly into Queens, they also hurt my feelings a little bit. Imagine if this was a crisply executed push, though. Like, we're, we have five pylons more than we actually need here. There's no fourth nexus. There, like, <laughs> all of this could be so much crisper. I mean, in the end, Dark is gonna be okay, despite all of the supply blocks. But I really think he shouldn't have been. I think if Hero executed this all very cleanly, he would have had these Stalkers with this initial group in the top right hand corner and everything would have been a-okay. Anyhow, now the game continues. And generally when you don't really deal a lot of damage with this Stalker stuff, I always kind of like the position for the Zerg better. Because now Zerg gets a whole lot of wiggle room. Now what's the wiggle room going to be used for? Apparently we've got a Hive, together with a Hydra Den, I guess we're gonna be going into Lurkers. Hero is gonna continue the aggression, there's the Lurker Den indeed. He is gonna continue the aggression, but he still has not built a fourth Nexus. If we're gonna play a macro Stalker Blink opener, we really need that fourth Nexus, and we needed it minutes ago. Prism gets biled down because it's way too far forward. Late on the Blink, ay 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 guys! Alright. I'll try and calm down a little bit, but let's just say that this is all suboptimal. This fourth Nexus is not gonna provide a whole lot of economy on the back of this, though. I guess this opener here from Dark is also not gonna allow him that much aggression, because we probably won't see him moving out until he at the very least gets himself the, uh, the upgrades done for the Lurkers. So that might be Hero saving grace here. But he doesn't have much of an answer against these disruptors. Or sorry, against these lurkers, other than the disruptors. But I'm assuming there will be vipers out as well. Now this base here is really only for gas mining. So if somehow, some way, Hero can snipe that base, this game will become much better for him. Okay, Dark mostly just going Zerklings and Hydras for now. Yep, he's gonna try and take this high ground base. Eh. This economy here from Zerk is really nothing too amazing either. There's the uh, High Templar transition. I think High Templar are a really good choice because the odds of the opponent going Vipers are very high. He hasn't done any of that production just yet, but Dark is gonna yeah, first go for a big round of Lurkers. Maybe use them to secure another base and then we'll move from there. Immortals coming up. Okay, so we're sticking around on a ground army. We're gonna go, I guess, Archon, Immortal, Disruptor, Storm, Stalker, Zealot. Basically all of the heavy hitters on the ground. A Sentry or two probably wouldn't hurt. This is before the Lurker upgrades are all finished, although it does have the ranged upgrade done, so committing here to a fight can be kind of tough. He's thinking about making another Nexus over here, expanding in the direction of the Zerg. 
We don't have any vipers yet, right? No, it's just two infestors. Okay. I guess Dark really just doesn't have the gas for it yet, but vipers would be a no-brainer. Random Archon over here. Very exposed, does get killed. Hetri over here, no cancel. Zerk is gonna continue the harassment though, and this is really an engagement that the Protoss player can easily make. When the lurkers are already burrowed like that, how in the world do you break them? Well, you need disruptors. This hatchery over here, or Protoss hatchery, is likely to fall. Hero decided to retreat, but then re-engage here in the top right hand corner, so that does mean quite a bit of waste of time. The lurkers are just simply thinking about marching straight towards the opponent's bases here, towards the left. And I think they should burrow here, and that is one hell of a position again. Base in the top right hand corner though will get destroyed. Dark has hit another supply block, so he's gonna need a bunch of lurkers here at home. Okay. The additional lurker production is uh, not shut down here, but the disruptors will not be coming out anymore. Other than maybe if there's a robo bay in the main, no, a robo facility, not the case. 25 probes have gone down, and I think in the end, this Zerk army will have to be addressed. Big corrosive biles. Only just now, by the way, is when the Hydras are properly getting their upgrades. So the plus one, or the additional ranged upgrade, rather, it, uh, I think it's plus two. Uh, the plus two ranged upgrade there did uh, finish up just recently, and now we're gonna go into the additional upgrades too. Yeah, so ultimately, Hero is gonna have to fight Lurkers here. With this army of his. And it's doable, but very tough. The two Immortals here in the mix I really do like. Fungal? Big fungals. Very big fungals. This is gonna buy enough time for the majority of that Zerg army to come back home. We're gonna need to see some storms. Don't storm your own units, please. I mean, just, you know, not in this game, but at least in the previous one, that was a bit of an issue. There's a concave of lurkers set up over here. What a series, guys. Very sick. He's a brave man. Decided to blink forward there. Doesn't know if there's enough energy for more fungal growths. Woohoo! Okay, nice bit of damage done right there by the Protoss, blowing up a lot of these units, but... All things considered, Protoss is now effectively on like a one and a half base economy, because those bases that he does have, they're already running out. We're gonna remake the fourth, fair enough. But in the meantime, Dark has got a really nice economy himself, and I think what he is aiming for is just a remax. He's never decided to add on any Vipers, which really interests me. I think Vipers would be a really nice unit to have, but... Like, Vipers can abduct these Disruptors, right? Which are really the only scary unit here in this army. You can always use it to abduct those uh, Immortals and Archons as well if you need to, but I think the Disruptors would be the main catch. One little roach over here trying to be a nuisance. Yeah, I think Mr. Dark here is a little concerned to go for a move out. But Dark, hmm. He likes playing with his food, doesn't he? I feel like we had a bit of a similar vibe in the previous game too, where I really felt like he could have been more aggressive earlier on. But he decides, nah. I'll let you have that base for a little bit, and then I will strike. He's trying to get into a position where he doesn't need Vipers. I mean, you only really need Vipers if you're being aggressive. And you need to abduct the opponent's units into your army. But if you're already in position, it's gonna be hard to really need any of that. There's a couple of revelations going down. Archon is running dangerously low, but lives for now. I mean, this is a Zerk infestation right now in the Protoss Natural. Dark reinforcing this slowly, methodically, very calmly. He's taking bases on the left side of the map. A very leisurely pace right here to what <laughs> Zerk ordinarily does. Lurkers in the main base. I mean, the Protoss is gonna commit to a full counterattack. Zerk is gonna have to wander back home because he can't really reinforce this because of another supply block, but also because of the fact that he's maxed out. Or at least close to maxed out. High Templar here. Not preemptively storming, so one of them is gonna end up going down. Couple more lurkers coming in from the left, a few more show up eventually. It's Dark, who absolutely dominates in the second half of game number four. Alrighty, the rubber match. We find ourselves on Neo-Humanity. 
And Hero started off this game not by building a pylon at home, but he decided to send a worker straight across the map. Hero is apparently ready to put it all on the line with some cheeky cheese. And I guess this is gonna be a bunch of proxy gates? Yep. All right. Now Dark has sent his very first Overlord straight across the map. He did scout out front, so he realizes that this is one of the builds that his opponent can play. I guess what Dark is running into here is that his opponent has blocked his, well, his natural every single game so far, but in this game that hasn't happened. Why? Why did we not see a quick probe scout? So he's sending in the probe right now, pretending like everything's normal. There's a forge on the back of this as well. So, okay, Hero is going to end this series with a proxy gateway, proxy forge cannon rush. I don't know if that's a good build. I honestly am inclined to imagine it's not great, but if Dark Over commits to defending this, so he hasn't seen, he may assume that this is a bluff right now. I think we should see a photon cannon or two. If Dark makes a whole lot of drones go to the low ground, he's gonna be in a world of trouble. Okay, he does not send the additional workers. I think that's the right call. Because he needs to anticipate, like he, he can't really know about the zealots right now, right? But he needs to anticipate that that is an option. Okay, this one will get killed. Three drones is enough to shut that down. He needs to make sure he starts up new photon cannons, though, before the hatchery finishes. Because obviously when the hatchery finishes, there's no way to pull that off anymore. Dark at this point sees the lack of wall off as well on the other side of the map since the Overlord has, well, made its way there eventually. That Nexus, Zork Nexus here is certainly going to go down. But do we have enough to win the game straight up with these Zealots? I am not 100% sure that we do. There's a Roach Warren coming up. Wouldn't even be surprised if we're going to see a second gas here pretty soon. This is going to be the world's most expensive queen, because an entire hatchery is going to go down for her. A couple of Zorklings going in for the counterattack. We don't have anything protecting the main base here for the Protals whatsoever. Oh my god, a cannon rush. A cannon rush in 2023 to decide a Best of 5 series, where Hero was originally 2-0 ahead. All right, these links are actually very dangerous. Okay, they're at the very least forcing out a photon cannon inside of the main base of the Protoss. This hatchery is certainly dead. But is this enough of an advantage right now, though, for Protoss? I am not convinced. The little brute links right there do end up sniping one of the Zealots. This pylon is going to go down as well. May very well cause a supply block here. Um, what about the roaches? Like, we've had the Roach Warren for a little while. Okay, they're coming up right now. A Creep Tumor was planted, so at the very least, this aggression is going to be difficult to commit to. A few Adepts right now also available here soon for the Protoss player, but the amount of links here is very impressive. Yeah, those Zerklings, I mean, uh, link speed or not, they're going to have a pretty easy time shutting all of this down. That being said, though, that was a lot of links for what was effectively only a Zealot or two. Hatchery gets replanted down, but now the roaches are out. I think as long as the Zorklings chase the shades, the queens are available for the base defense as well, he's gonna be okay. Roaches should have an easy time. More adepts are coming up. We have a Twilight Council on the back of this right now. I would imagine at home for the Protoss. Yeah, there it is. It's gonna be Glaived Adepts. Now, one base Glaived Adepts sounds like a pretty horrible build and that's because it is especially when you lose what is effectively all of your production here on the other side of the map i think dark i mean he didn't take the most comfortable route in getting here but i think he's managed to pull it off he's got an awful lot of production right now only 18 workers though so he, he definitely is all in here he can sort of drone behind i guess he's got another base but sniping these adepts is massive He's just gonna go for a counterattack here. Yeah, no, Hero is thinking about making a Nexus at home, but that is never going to happen. More Zorklings here reinforcing this. They're gonna just work on those Adepts, and those Adepts are gonna have to get away once again. One of them has managed to sneak out, but I don't think it's gonna live for too much longer. Glaives is gonna finish up in about a minute from now, but I really don't like that follow-up very much. I think in my mind, this should have been Dark Templar 100% of the time, but I guess because of the Overlord, he decided, you know what, I shouldn't do it because I would have to plant it down within the Overlord's vision. The Zerk is in the main base, and what originally started as a 2-0 advantage for Hero 
turns out to be a 3-2 win for Dark. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. And also check out my second channel, youtube.com slash moreloco. Currently, I've got my StarCraft II Wings of Liberty Human Edition campaign going up there. Now, I know you may be thinking that the Wings of Liberty is usually the human campaign. It's a custom campaign. It's where you play the Warcraft humans rather than the StarCraft II humans in Wings of Liberty. It's a lot of fun. You should go check it out. Link is down below in the description. Anyways, for now, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you once again tomorrow for another video.